I'm going to demonstrate doing a additive factors model, learning curve model in R. Uh, this is the model that uh, is behind the learning curve uh, displays in DataShop. It's an extension of item response theory. Uh, and so to uh, create for one of those models, of course, we first have to uh, load a file that we uh, have copied uh, or that we've exported from DataShop. So I'm going to call the data file df here uh, and do this read command uh, and choose this, uh, this plot data set here. And then I can see the variables in that file I've loaded by doing summary. Uh, and I can see I've got an anonymous student ID here, for instance. Let's see how many rows are in this file. I'm going to take the length of uh, df. Uh, actually, let me show an error here. If I just do a non student ID, it's going to say it doesn't know that object. Uh, so, one simple way to shorten things is to use this attach command, and then I'll be able to refer to variables um, in the data set as I did above. And there's this nice way, if you use the up arrow, I can go back and get that length command that I used before. And this time it should work since I did the attach thing. And I see there's 5,104 rows, and this is the geometry area, 9697 data set. Um, actually, I'm going to now uh, create a new variable called success, which is going to encode whether the student got it right or wrong on their first attempt. Uh, and so um, the way I'm going to do that is by uh, creating a new variable as a vector uh, here. Um, and instead of setting it to end here, I'm going to set it to the length of anonymous student ID. In other words, I'm a, I want a, a vector that's as long as the data set uh, and it's numeric. I have that. And then I'm going to do this fancy R code, which allows me to say for all the first attempts that are equal to correct, that's lowercase c, um, set those to 1. And now I can just do a summary command on just that new success variable. And I see uh, get a mean of 0.75, which uh, sounds right. Corresponds with the fact that I've got about uh, 3,800 3, corrects versus 1,200 some incorrects. Now about three quarters. Um, so now uh, I am ready to uh, basically build a model, but I'm going to take it an, well, an, an extra little step that's not completely necessary, but it'll illustrate uh, this data frame command, which allows me, I'm going to set uh, to this variable area a subset of the data from DF, as well as that success variable. So anonymous student ID, knowledge component, opportunity, and, and uh, well, let's leave out condition. Uh, Opportunity, these are all a part of the DF. Success isn't, but I'm going to put them all together in one new data set called area. Um, and we could type summary area if we wanted to. But now I'm going to uh, detach DF and then attach this new one area. Um, and that's it's just to in indicate that I have success in two different ways. But here's the key thing. I want to use the general linear model command, uh, GLM in R, to create a model. I'll call it M1 and assign that to the result of calling gener general linear model. The first thing I do is specify my dependent variable. That's the success. I'm predicting success from what? I'm going to have a parameter for the stu each student. That's anonymous student ID uh, plus one for each knowledge component. Uh, 
um, plus knowledge component by opportunity. This is a, meaning that for each opportunity, uh, we'll have a, essentially a slope by the opportunity count. And uh, I don't need an intercept in this regression model, so I add minus one in, in R. Um, I want this to be a logistic regression because the dependent variable success is uh, discrete, zero, one. So I say the family of this general linear model is a binomial. That's a way of getting a logistic regression. And I have to specify the data set. The data is equal to that area one I did. And that, uh, if I didn't make a mistake, that should work. Um, so it takes a little bit of time to run, but not too long. Now I can type summary and see what I get from that. Oh, and I just used the up arrow to get back and fix that typo I made, typing MA instead of M1. Uh, okay, summary. So it shows me uh, all the parameters. These are the uh, student, uh, let's go all the way to the top here. This is the estimate for each student that's the student intercept or the student proficiency in, in IRT terms. And then these are the values for uh, each of the knowledge components. There's circle area, circle area indirect, and so forth. Um, I guess this was the one of the LFA knowledge components that I exported when I exported this model. Um, I can see the standard error. There's a column for that. Um, and uh, for the BOLO, the Z value and the P value, some of these students' parameters are significantly different from zero. Uh, it's not particularly meaningful. Um, one thing that is meaningful is now if we look at these uh, opportunity, these are the slope values. Um, they should be mostly positive, and they mostly are. There's some smaller negative ones here. Uh, one difference from this AFM results, if you compare these to the slopes in data shop, is Data shop's model is built to not allow uh, negative slopes on the learning curve, but most of these are positive. Uh, some are particularly big, but most of them are in the 0.2-ish range, uh, which is reasonably typical for a better uh, learning curve model. Uh, so uh, we can see now the here uh, the slope values being Sorry, those aren't the slope values. Those are the KC intercepts. You got to get down to where it says opportunity here. That's where uh, things are more interesting. These values are meaningful when they're significantly different from zero. So that's a big slope uh, for circle area, circle area indirect. Uh, most of them are significant. Some, some of them are not. Parallelogram area, I think, because it's basically so close to perfect success. It's got a high slope. Uh, but that's it. You can play around with other versions of GLM if you want. Let's make Model 2. Uh, let, let me use my arrow key to modify the current one. Model 2 could be just a vanilla kind of, uh, uh, not exactly an IRT model because it's knowledge components rather than items. But if I delete that interaction term, uh, that uh, corresponds roughly with the log linear test model in psychometrics, so it's like generalization item response theory. Now if we do the summary on that one, then we're not going to get the slope parameter because I got rid of it, but we'll get parameters for each student in each knowledge component, parameter estimates. Um, boom. Uh, and we, you know, if you have other features in the data set, you can play with those, but that gives you an idea of how you can use R and the GLM command in R to replicate more or less the additive factors model.